Oh. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Sip, Sip Saver, Saver, and Celebrate. Today we got a guest, Jenny. Jenny is going to be teaching us about coffee and espressos. So, take it away, Jen. Tell us about your passion, because you have probably more coffees, espresso, uh, than anybody I know, just sitting in your house, along with a cupboard full of of little elixirs to put with everything, you know. I mean, elixirs meaning the, the syrups, not not alcohol. <laughs> well, as Chris said, um, I absolutely love coffee. Um, obviously, um, I have a certain pl uh, flavor preference of coffees. Generally, I tend to gravitate more towards the sweeter flavor profiles, like mm -hmm. caramel, mm -hmm. chocolate is my favorite. The um, bulk of what I have tends to have a chocolatey, sometimes spicy, and I tend to shy away from the citrusy notes um, and things of that nature. But anyway, I just, I love everything about coffee. I love the smell, I love the taste, um, and coffee making, as proper coffee making, as well as coffee tasting is actually an art. So everything impacts the flavor of coffee from the type of bean, which fun fact, coffee is not a bean. Coffee is actually considered a fruit. Oh, so it cool. is a fruit from a tree, and what we refer to as the bean is actually the pit or the seed of the fruit. Okay. So. So the, then the, it, it flowers, then the fruit, then the, okay, okay, so yeah. And then they harvest, and then they remove what we refer to as the bean. And then the bean gets roasted, uh -huh. and then it gets ground, and then you add your water, and you have a good cup of coffee hopefully now none of these the are the digested one that uh, some special animal digested in the what is, that, what is that one called do you know the one i'm talking about i've heard of it but i don't know the yes name there's actually the most expensive coffee the most buy. expensive you it's where an animal eats it digests it lets it go and then somebody gets paid to pick up all their stuff clean it up and then make it into coffee mm. and it is the most expensive coffee in the world but that's not one of these right no thank you i'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm good on all that <laughs> <laughs> so everything impacts the flavor of the coffee from the time on the vine um there are some jamaican pea berry types coffees where they um actually harvest very early on okay um and that affects the flavor i've had and, some jamaican coffee it's actually pretty good oh jamaican the jamaica has wonderful coffee and then of course you know the go-to is like columbia and so on and so forth okay um another fun fact is the actual um coffee actually originated in africa Oh, Even no way. though That's we cool. tend to go to South America as the go-to for coffee. No, well, I mean, obviously South America and Africa at one time used to be the same continent, so it's very, very True. logical to say that the beans could have been part of, you know, each continent because that used to be one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, are we ready to start tasting? I know we're going to be running, like, marathons by the time we're done here, but uh, honestly, how should we taste... And how should we make sure that we're getting, I mean, obviously everybody thinks of coffee, let's throw it in the Keurig or put it in a cup and just go to town. But what should we be doing? How, how should we properly so there, uh, be drinking there and tasting? So there are a couple of ways. You have the French press, which is probably the most underrated because it kind of takes a lot more work. You know, and that's what this guy is here. You know, you put your coffee in there, you pull your water in there. And I like 15 minutes. To me, 15 minutes is perfect. But the reason you would do a French press is because it does bring out all the flavors and it almost gives it a syrupy consistency. Where your drip yeah. coffees, um, like the Keurig or just the old school coffee pot, just drip through and run out. And so there is no um, bringing out those flavors. And what about the percolators that, you know, we used to have, my grandparents used to have? Those percolators. are actually referred to now as pour-overs or mocha pots, but they still have something very similar to that. <clears throat> okay. Um, another thing that can impact that is, um, yes, with the different brewing methods, but how much coffee you're using and the type of ground makes, it, makes a big difference. So in an espresso machine, for example, you want to use a very fine, almost sand-like grind. Yeah, you um, kind of yelled at me about mine. I didn't yell, I just guided. You're Probably. doing it wrong! <laughs> um, in uh, the French presses and a drip coffee pot actually require a more coarser grind. And the reason for that being is you can have something called over extraction or under extraction. Okay. So if you're using too fine of a grind in a French press 
or in a standard coffee pot, you're gonna have over extracted coffee. So the water is in contact with the grounds for longer than what it should be. If you're also using too much coffee, the same thing happens and you end up with a very bitter coffee. Okay. Conversely, if you don't use enough coffee or you're using too coarse of a grind, say in your espresso machine, what happens is you have under extraction and ends up being very watery. Now the type of bean that you have and the type of roasting that you have will determine whether it is light, medium, or dark. Light tends to have more, it's less roasting, has more caffeine content than dark, which is more roasted. Does oh, not affect the bitterness. I always wondered what that meant. You know, this is medium roast or this is light roast. I didn't know what that meant. It's basically how long it's been cooked for, how long it's been roasted for. Um, also, some coffees, depending on the roasting methods and the type of coffee, will be um, light, medium, or full body. Lighter bodied coffees tend to be a little bit more thin and watery. A good full bodied coffee will be thicker, almost syrupy, and have a really nice flavor profile. At any rate, regardless of the coffee that you're using, or um, it should never, ever, ever be bitter. There can be maybe a hint of bitterness depending on the roast. I've but made if, that mistake many a times. Yes, if it is too bitter, you have over extracted and they're using okay. the wrong All grind right. or too much, too many coffee grounds. And okay. more coffee doesn't necessarily mean more caffeine. That is correct. Okay. The caffeine content is determined on the roast. All right. Well, so are we try, ready to start drinking? We want to go this way down or that yeah, way? Yeah, let's down? start okay. from here and end at mine. All right. So I this, have one. This is the FDC Brewing Company, and they're um, the Fire Department's Brewing Company. They are out in New York, um, and so we order our coffee more, you know, probably once a month because this is one of my favorites. Um, and then we've also got, you know, a couple other ones at home. But this one to me is is the best. Um, I have had it, so I definitely want you guys to try it first. You know, see what you're getting um, because. I love this one. <laughs> okay. Um, now, when you are properly coffee tasting, the um, actual method to do it is you smell the beans, get the body of the beans before the grind. Okay. Then you smell the beans, the body of the beans after the grind, and then you smell the actual cup of coffee. Very oh. similar to wine tasting. And then you sip, kind of swirl it around in your mouth just like you would kind with wine. Kind of like our tequila. Our tequila. Yes. I love doing that with my tequila. So you can taste, smell. Uh, I first always start with the nose. Tell me, what do I get on the nose? So on the nose for this one, I'm definitely getting a hint of caramel mm -hmm. and a little bit of spice. Yep. It's got a very smoky finish. So um, just like with wine and tequila, the finish, or as the layperson would call it, the aftertaste. Right. is often quite different than the initial taste on the tip of the tongue. So the initial taste usually is the sweetness and the finish will be those other notes such as um, citrus Ooh, or spice. That is like candy. Mm -hmm. Very caramel. And caramel. so for I me, this one, I just add a tablespoon of of uh, raw sugar cane just because, you know. Did in you the do morning, that already? No, or, no okay. this is just this straight. Is straight. Okay, yeah. okay. Just because in the morning, you know, that kind of when I don't eat that kind of the calories to get everything going in the morning. Not a great substitute, but it does work. So I get more of the raw coffee on the taste. On the nose, I get some amazing aromas, but on the taste, I'm not getting any of those aromas on the taste to myself. I taste everyday coffee on that one. It's good coffee. It's not like, you know, <laughs> let me go to the, the corner diner and they just give you the black mud that they got, you know, it's good coffee. I just don't get any flavors coming through on the coffee itself. Me. Okay. And just, just like you get a lot of bitter on some of the tequilas and I get sweet. I think that might be something going on there. And, and so I'm going to agree with Jenny on this one. I do. I get that smoke. I get that caramel. I get that almost almond to it, which is absolutely delicious and this one i like cold as well as i like warm so um you know i'm actually glad you mentioned that because one of the things with coffee is when you drink coffee hot which is generally the preferred method of drinking coffee people drink coffee hot coffee actually is meant to drink a little bit cooler it's meant to drink temped out or even cold 
because as coffee cools down, the full flavor profiles run That's out. how I prefer it. I do. I, I, if it's so hot, I, I either have to add an ice cube because it's too dang hot, or I have to just let it sit there. Like when I go for the morning before I go to work, I'll make my coffee, I leave it open and let it just cool down to room temperature, then I'll put my lid on and go to work. Um, but then it's easy to drink and it's, it's tasty. You know. Well, and and you guys heard me say that you know with mo these I usually let it sit 15 minutes. Um, doesn't mean it can't sit longer because when I come home from work, you know, it's cold, it's cooled off, but it's still good. 15 minutes is what I give myself in the morning. I'm like, hey, gotta go. All right, Jen, talk about the next one. The rest of these up to here are all Jenny, so she's gonna let us know about hers, and um, and then at the end. We're also gonna taste the espresso that I made, but I'm, I've made a cocktail for us to try, and I know you're not gonna partake, but uh, Devin and I will be uh, tasting a mixed drink, kind of like we did in that other video. But go ahead. So between coffee tastings, um, you always want to cleanse the palate. Um, water is the best way to do that. So that way um, you're not intermingling the flavors from the different types of coffee. So the next one we have, and all of my coffees, with the exception of my espresso, are all store-bought. I'm impatient and I don't like to wait for coffee. <laughs> my espresso, however, I do order that. That is Italian. Um, I When I went to the Mediterranean last year, I was um, very spoiled on Italian and Spanish oh, coffee. So much better. Yes, oh, their God. espresso is amazing. And you, you, go to, you go up to the espresso counter, you literally order it, and it's it's perfect temperature immediately in Italy. You don't have to wait for it to cool down. It is perfect. You can look. I was wondering, like, these people must have, like, mouths and stomachs of steel because I watch them as they go up to the counter. They order it, drink it, and then leave. And I'm like, how can you do it? It's got to be burning. And no, it's perfect to drink immediately. And but it's so good. That's because of that, the flavor profile. However, French coffee, that's a no. France, up your game. <laughs> so, so the next one is a Frederick's... Um, Pike's Peak Blend. It is a light roast, so a higher caffeine content. So, Devin, would you like to start? Sure. <laughs> I always love it when, you know, you got to try it on the nose. <laughs> um, very light. Um, not super flavorful on the nose. I'm not really getting any of those caramels or anything. It's just kind of light and wispy coffee, yeah. Now I do get a hint of smoke, some chocolate, and maybe a hint of molasses. On, on the tongue, I will agree that there is something sweet in there, which could potentially be that molasses, just to add that little bit of sweetness. Yeah, on the tongue, I'm definitely sensing some cocoa and molasses going on there. Okay, so I definitely do the I do get the smoke on this one. It's got a wonderful finish. There's, I want to say like in the very, very, very like around the corner, some like spices um, on the hint of being baking spices, but not that sweet. This one tastes watered down to me. It tastes lighter. I could probably down it quick, um, but it's a lighter coffee. Like it, it's not as bold. Very, very. I don't get it. Again, I'm not getting from what I smell to what I drink. Doesn't doesn't correlate to me. Yeah, that definitely um, is a lighter bodied coffee because okay. it doesn't have that thickness, that creaminess that a full bodied coffee. But that's have. a light roast, so you're gonna get hyped up pretty quick is yes what you're saying. that okay. is a higher caffeine well if it contact. tastes like water and you can run it down quick and you're going to be running around the building all right <laughs> generally i try and avoid light roasts because of the amount of coffee i drink every day because in the morning okay. i'll have my shot of espresso and then i will have a 30 ounce cup of coffee you know between like sure. 8 a.m and noon so all right well let's uh try the next one what do we got so the next one is one of my favorite brands. It is a medium roast. It is Javalia. This is actually their Guatemalan blend. Um, 
I am a big fan of all the Javalia um, blends. I've not had a bad one yet. Okay. Um, and definitely earthy with a little bit of cocoa. Um, they used to advertise all the time, so I definitely recognize the brand. Um, never really tried it, so we'll see. Okay, so definitely actually very pleasant on the on the tongue. Um, doesn't really hit any bitter receptors. Um, there's a little bit of that cocoa and that chocolate in there. So, yeah, not terrible. What do you think of the finish? Um, I think that it is sweet. Huh. Not really. I think the finish kind of disappears. I, I think you get more on the front of it than you do on the finish. It's just kind of like, ooh, I'm there by. You know, it, it doesn't leave you anything to remember it by. It's not lasting. Okay. Oh. Come on, okay. Definitely, nice. okay. Definitely smells of cocoa. <laughs> Definitely. That is the biggest thing. And I don't want to say it's overpowering because I love chocolate. I love cocoa. But... You almost lose any other notes behind the cocoa. The cocoa okay. is so intense on the nose. And that might be why I'm, I'm thinking the finish disappears is because that cocoa is just right there. Definitely same thing with the, with the um, taste. You can really taste the cocoa, maybe like a hint of almond. Um, but yeah, the finish is, it's gone as soon as it starts. That currently is actually what I'm drinking. Um, for my cold bruise in the morning. Get some coffee on the nose this there. This makes me... <laughs> no, no, actually, I, did, I didn't I didn't stir it with my nose. <laughs> um, now, see, I do like this one. It's It's got a... It's not... Oh, to me, it's not overpowering sweet, but it has a little bit of sweetness to it. And um, it just makes me think of what I'm going to expect when I go to Starbucks. Something sweet and coffee and, you know, paying $8.00. <laughs> um, I like it. It's very, very, um, again, quick and gone, but it has a, when it's there, there is a nice little, um, it's a good flavor. It's a good coffee flavor. It is very full body. Um, yeah, I like it. You can definitely tell the difference between the, the texture of the body of mm -hmm. this one compared to the body oh, of the down. Fredericks. And so it's got that thicker um, creaminess to it. What do we got next? Next one is Folgers 1850, and this one is Black Gold, also one of my favorites. So Folgers really has branched out um, in recent years, and they really are one of my favorite coffees, believe it or not. So they, okay. they are no longer your grandma or your mom's coffee in the red can. Um, Have you had the, the Folgers? But it's something silk, dark silk. Oh, dark silk. I love, I love that one. It is so smooth. I they, have it in the house. <laughs> Folgers actually even has a low acid coffee for people who have um, issues with their stomach. Maybe you've got a little bit of acid reflux huh. going on. Heartburn um, after um, bariatric surgery for myself, when I finally was able to go back to drinking coffee, I started off with their Simply Smooth is what it's called. Um, because my stomach was able to handle it a little bit better. So this one I have actually purchased numerous times. It is one of my favorites. Um, they're so smooth. Um, the bitterness is almost non-existent with any of their coffees. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> Did you just stir it again with your nose? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, a very, very interesting on the, on the nose for sure. <laughs> On the nose or in the nose? I don't know. <laughs> hey, the cup is a little fuller than I expect, okay? Um, but I guess I'm kind of lost in it because it just kind of is like coffee water. I don't get anything so far like we've seen out of these three, any of that aroma of cocoa or caramel or anything. It's just coffee water to me. And so... It is coffee, yeah. Um, no. And so, I mean, yeah, you, you're, you tell me that this is up the game from the red can, but 
on the nose, I would disagree. So we're going to try it and I'll let you know. Again, it just tastes like Folgers to me, you know. It's just kind of that burnt, uh, um, burnt roasted coffee, you know. It's great that, that, you know, most companies buy Folgers because it's cheap and easy to get, but that's kind of where that sticks with me. See, now I do get what you're saying about the, the roasted coffee, not the burnt. I can smell some spice. And a hint of cocoa, but the spice definitely overpowers the cocoa. <clears throat> and I do get a spicy and a smokiness um, on the tongue and with the finish. And for the record, this is a dark roast. Now, see, I, I do get, I get a nice, I do get the coffee. But it's kind of like a fresh can when you open it up and you're like, oh, this does smell good. <laughs> it's going to be good coffee. I did get a little of this, just a hint of spice on this, but it just really tastes, it, it's more smells, I mean. <laughs> it smells like a good coffee. Just, just like you open up the can when the first time you open it up and like, oh, that does smell good. <laughs> That's what this smells like to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I do like that. That is good. Take a bigger taste of that one. <laughs> well, moving along, because I know we're going to... We're already learning along. But I love this. Um, I think it's a good cup of coffee. I, it's a coffee. All right, 8 o'clock. Let's go. This is decaf. So. Oh, Lord. Okay. Because I like coffee so much, yes, I drink decaf. Also, one of my favorites, 8 o'clock has the one of the best decafs I've ever found. 8 o'clock... Folgers has a great decaf, and then there is a third brand, which I, as we're not reviewing, I shall not name. We can. Um, Newman's All makes a great decaf. I'm okay. actually loving the smell of it. You know, it is, you know, very earthy, but at the same time, you get some sweetness to it. Um, you do get that, that chocolate that's in it. Um, so I would, on the nose, say, hey, it should taste good. And yep, it's all right there on the palate as well. You know, it hits from that sweet to that almost creamy um, to there's a little bit of spice that comes up behind it. And then the finish is definitely that cocoa. That cocoa is on the, the very back just kind of saying, enjoy another sip of me. <laughs> now, I will say... You are correct, and I'm not going to say what the initial notes are because all of these coffees out here, I know what the flavor profile and the notes are. Um, so you are correct uh, about the cocoa on the finish of that one. <coughs> very earthy, very smooth, very full bodied. For the record, none of these have any additives. These are completely black coffees. And they have been cooled, so that way you're getting the full flavor profile. And oh, I like that. And a lot of people feel like when they are making coffee, they have to drown them with um, cream, or they have to drown them with, you know, sweet and low and sugars. Um, what is your expert opinion on that? The reason for that being is they're trying to hide the bitterness of coffee, but again, coffee should not be bitter if it is ground and prepared properly. Just it, like tequila, if you have to have salt and lime to drink your tequila, you got bad tequila. But on this one, I do get what you guys were talking about, very earthy, full body. You can smell a lot of different aromas and uh, senses on there. I get like a darker chocolate on the flavor profile when you taste it. I do enjoy it. That, that'd be good. Uh, other than I need my caffeine in the morning to get me going. And that's usually what I drink at night so uh, I can sleep. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Go ahead, Devin. Go ahead. Go ahead with that one and then I'll jump in. But... So this next one is Lavazza Gran Silesione. Lavazza is one of my favorites. This is store-bought. Lavazza obviously is Italian from Tirani, Italy.
Yeah, they had those Lavazza stores all over the place when we were in Italy. That's how I found out about it. <laughs> um, this one's unique. It kind of, to me, smells like well water with um so well water is not a positive memory for me <laughs> right but you know it's very minerally and it's you know can be either very salty or you know very um negative on the palate so right off the nose i get that very minerally um flavor with um just a little bit of maybe a spice um on the nose Now that one definitely is one of those bitter receptors. That's that's where it all dances right there on the bitter, you know, parts of the tongue. So you do, you know, get the the spices in there. You get the caramel, but then to me, it's all um, quickly whisked away by you know sending those receptors to the brain of I'm bitter, you know, stay away. So. This would be probably one that I would add that tablespoon of sugar to just so that Take the it, it takes that bitter out of it. So, <laughs> um, and that doesn't mean I'm overly killing the coffee because I love the flavors of coffee. It's just that sugar, you know, and I'm not using white sugar, I'm using a sugar cane um, to do just that and just take that edge off the back. <coughs> Definitely get the hints of spice right off. Definitely. <laughs> it's um, very, I think the bitterness that you might be sensing, in my opinion, is the same bitterness that you get when you eat dark chocolate. Okay. Um, because I okay, there yeah. is a, an intense dark chocolate flavor to that. And you could be right because yeah depending upon the dark chocolate the the more whole the dark chocolate is and usually the bitter more bitter it is so yeah i can understand that almost kind of reminds me of baking cocoa yeah. there you go i smell that it smells so good still full body very creamy You get the bitter on that. Um, I get a good flavored coffee, but I think the bitter on the back. You just like a, and then it's gone. But yep. it's still, it's like, oh, that's weird. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right, espresso time. Woo All right. All right. So these are the only ones that I do not purchase from the stores. I do order these. So this is Lavazza. Espresso Italiano Decaffeinato. So it is a decaf espresso. They do extract 99% of the caffeine from their espresso, which in your standard decaf coffees still have some caffeine content. So Lavazza actually ups the game a little bit with that and extracts almost all of the caffeine in the nice. decaffeinated. And, and we, we got my uh, brand new espresso cup. An espresso is not always made for putting into a, another coffee. It is actually made to enjoy separate. Um, I'm going to shout out to my friends that are over um, seas. Um, that when, you know, this past week when we were in Orlando, you know, they were making coffee, but they were doing it English style. And so, you know, they'd make their shot of espresso. And then, you know, people would want full cups of that. Not really what it's designed for. Um, espresso is meant to enjoy and sip. So on that, you know, you're getting that super full, robust um, body. Um, there is definitely um, a little bit of, of um, spice to it. And I would definitely say that that chocolate in it is right there. It does have a hint of bitterness to it. Um, you definitely got the chocolate and spice on the nose, maybe some citrus. Mm. Um, you'll notice the crema on that. that. When yeah. you are pulling a proper shot of espresso, your tamp, which is how hard you press your grounds into um, your espresso cup, is um, 
you're supposed to use 20 to 30 PSI and it has to be evenly tamped. Otherwise your espresso will be over or under extracted. And a good bowl of espresso will have a proper crema on it, which is that sweet layer at the top. I get citrus in that one, but definitely on the smell, uh, the nose of that, I get, um, I get wonderful coffee smell to that one. Um, however, it gets quick bitter at a first and what, and what a lot of people, you know, don't realize as far as it also aids a lot in digestion. That it does. Yeah, that's why every time we're on the cruise, after dinner, well, let's get us a little, get a little uh, espresso. To Not only out. is it for, you know, getting prepared for the night, because as y'all know, or don't know, adult night actually, you know, doesn't happen until after 10. And this one is um, La Baza Crema Augusto, and this, these two Ooh. I drink every single morning. I like that one. That one is good. This almost has a floral smell to it. I was going to say I get citrus on that one with, with a wide variety of, um, of this. Since we still got a lot of, little left of mine... You want to talk about this one too? And then uh, I'll get it. So this is the one that I ground for Christopher when <laughs> I told him about his coffee grind. So, or was this, is this Ooh, one? Oh, this one smells, yeah, that's the okay, one. Okay, that's the one I ground. So this is um, Lavazza Espresso Italiano. So it is your standard um, Italian Lavazza Espresso, also available in stores here in the United States. It is a medium roast, um, still full bodied, however. That tastes wonderful. None of the bitter that I got from this one, all the full smell and that but this one is the one that i bought i did buy it at the store <laughs> uh because it was the only lavazza they had and that was the espresso italiano that one's nice because that one doesn't have a lot of that bitter on the end you get that full flavor that chocolate is right there so it is very nice i i this. would totally go with all three of those espressos um and i would probably drink them straight I do love espresso and cream. That is kind of one of my favorite things. Um, I guess the cream just kind of brings out those flavors and kind of mellows those bitter ones. And I appreciate the milkiness. Um, and it, if you're already drinking a full bodied um, coffee and then you're adding just a little bit of the heaviness of that cream, it adds mm -hmm. to the milky and creaminess in the body of it, I think. Okay. All right. Now, for the last one this is also for me and the reason why i made mine was so that way i could get one ounce of the espresso one and a half ounces of mr black this is so good unfortunately you can't get it in michigan <laughs> but it's in just about every state around us but um i happened to pick this up when we were in florida um i grabbed two of them because they are just so so good uh coffee liqueur that is just wonderful you can drink this straight on the rocks uh you can actually make an old-fashioned with this it's kind of really good you mix this whiskey throw it over the rocks oh man it's so good uh but then you also put in a half uh a half an ounce of vodka in there um add your ice and then shake it up and we had a morning um, coffee cocktail. Oh of, yeah, we did over a couple at the, weeks ago. Yep, at the um, side. And that was a coffee old fashioned, which was absolutely amazing. They used Kahlua instead of Mr. Black. So um, there are definitely options out there, guys. If you are looking for something other than what everyone orders, um, one of our we we have both have you know different apps on our phone but one of my favorite ones is the bartender app where it will pull anything and everything you can think of to mix with so um definitely always options guys so keep that in mind um the head on that is absolutely beautiful isn't that gorgeous um and the mix of the caramel color all the way down to you know i'm assuming the coffee is at the bottom because it should be a little bit heavier and more dense Definitely has an ombre feel to it. Oh my god, it's so. I've had this uh, multiple times. I know you're not going to drink, but would you like to smell it? I least? will smell. Give it a good nose and tell me what you smell. Oh, liquor. <laughs> that is all I smell. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I can't. Ooh. That's all I can smell. This liquor is that um, tequila that you put in there. There's no tequila in there. 
It's it's Mr. Black. There's uh, vodka. You're probably smelling the vodka. Um, uh, Mr. Black, vodka, espresso, and then shake with ice. Now, but see, I, I would I would probably play that with with a a tequila. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is Mr. Black? Um, Mr. Black is a, it is made with coffee too. Um, it is a coffee liqueur. Um, <laughs> they make it, uh, so how do I explain it? It's using cold brew coffee and uh, it's usually a high, um, a high, how do you put it? Um, like a, a, a high, not octane, <laughs> high alcohol content uh, liquor. Um, and they extract the bean essence with the liquor. So you know how, um, for instance, your um, your vanilla extract, same thing. It's got a it's it's got exactly. Australian vodka. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, so you're using a high Australian vodka. That's how it actually extracts the coffee from uh, uh, the the liquor for or the liquor extracts the coffee. Kind of like instead of using water, you're using the vodka. And same thing goes when you got the vanilla beans. You're, you put the vanilla beans in the in the uh, the uh, vodka or whatever liquor you're using, um, and extract that essence from there. But other than that, guys, and I know that's this it. is a little bit long-winded of a video, so we appreciate you, you know, sticking through and with thanks, us. Thanks, Jenny, for joining us. And I still have, us. you know, one other quick question. You know, so we hinted about cold brews and you were just talking about how yep. they cold brew with that since you are you know the coffee connoisseur i see you know when you're making a cold brew it can be anywhere from you know a couple hours to up to you know a week there's you know some people who do it you know they use three times the amount of coffee to your to your water but then there's is one people that you know they make it a week in advance and it sits there and steeps all week um that is why we're asking the question you know you, you just saw her crinkle her nose at that so so i guess explain to us what your best recommendation is when we're talking about a cold brew because you know what i do love that once in a while and i can tell you big b out there has probably the best cold brew and that'll send you buzzing for hours. <laughs> so, cold brew. If you see me running around the block and I forgot my car at home, mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> so, cold brew is actually different than iced coffee. Iced coffee is a standard coffee that has just been chilled. Cold brew, as Devin mentioned, is where your coffee to water is usually right around three to one. Um, I, If you're putting coffee through a coffee maker, um, that's not a good cold brew, I'm sorry. It, cold brews are best made, in my opinion, via a French press. You still use hot water um, you wanna... and then you let it steep. The ideal for steeping, they recommend, is 12 to 24 hours. Now, if you steep it for 12, you're still running into having <laughs> it under extracted. If you're steeping it for a week, you have that increased water to coffee contact. Now you are way over extracting. Okay. You're going to end up with a very so stale and bitter brew. Is the optimal time? 24 hours. 24 okay. hours, okay. Well, since we got it here, might as well give it a quick review just by itself. What did you get um, on the nose? On the nose, the you get definitely that coffee, but that uh, vodka is right there to remember you that it's alcohol. You smell the coffee and that. Um, Definitely a lot of chocolate to oh, it, um, and, and definitely just oh, just a like hint that. of of a smoky <laughs> spice. Um, and then on that palate, you got to get past that vodka, but then it is definitely there. That that chocolate is very warming and robust, and and that mm. spice plays just on the very tip of your tongue. So it is absolutely delicious. I go ahead, you know, again. I know you were little bit quiet there. What did you smell when you I, it? I definitely smelled um, with that. I Not so much the vodka on the nose, definitely the coffee and hints of chocolate on the nose. That, I'm really impressed with that because I, I, as I don't drink, when I smell liquor, that's all I can smell. And liquor. maybe you smelled the vodka that I added into it for the, for the, for the martini. But, but I smell a nice, strong coffee 
sweet, delicious, cocoa. It does smell very good. And actually, I get molasses. Did you smell the molasses? I do a bit, yes. Oh. Mm. Well, remember to share us with your friends. We subscribe, please subscribe. We need all the subscribers. <laughs> and when you see us out, please come talk to us. We love that. You know, we had We've some had people yesterday. People, yeah. Hey, you guys are sip saver and celebrate. So we thank you. We love that you love our penguins. You know, and, <laughs> and we've got different ones. So if you want merchandise, you know, make sure and let us know. Drop us in the comments. Hey, we want we want to represent you guys. But it is Sunday, so this afternoon check back because we got something else planned for you but until then remember to sip, sip savor and, and always celebrate. celebrate i'm gonna run home now <laughs>